Welcome back. We're with David Burroughs. David, let's start with an email. This is from Paul in Kingston, Ontario. Magna International. Is this a buy, sell, or a hold? Okay. <laughs> so, Paul, uh, part of the topic today is going to be talking about how investors are positioned right. versus what is actually happening. And while I know there's been all kinds of fear about recession and slowdown, and in particular, fear about the auto industry For over sure. the last year, yeah. um, we've seen a really nice turn globally over the last eight weeks in autos. So uh, Magna's an interesting company because, of course, it trades at quite a significant discount mm -hmm. to the, auto, uh, the other uh, companies in its group. Uh, it has virtually no exposure or very little exposure to Chinese trade. Um, the, uh, you, you, it pays a 2.6% dividend. It's got, got it. a free cash flow yield. It's generating a yield of about 13% on mm -hmm. its capital. Uh, and we think that we are we will see over the next 12 months sort of some global reacceleration. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned earlier PMI data, or purchasing managers data, globally looks like it bottomed in July, even though U.S. data slowed a little later. Right. So uh, that should be supportive. We got strong consumer out there, uh, and so we think we may have seen the extent of the slowdown in autos, and it should be. Uh, positive for Magna. Okay, David, thank you for that. Let's uh, head to the phones now. We'll bring in Andre from Chilliwack, BC. Hi, Andre. Oh, good morning. I'm first up already. <laughs> You're number one. Uh, very good. Uh, thank you for taking my call. You bet. Uh, Mr. Burroughs, uh, please, your comments uh, on industrials, uh, the U.S., uh, in particular Boeing. It seems to be uh, uh, lowly priced. Would you be a buyer at Boeing at this level? Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre. So, so Andre, as you may know, uh, we are quite tactical about picking our spots. And so our bias right now is to be leaning towards economically sensitive sectors uh, that benefit if there's some reflation. And so industrial is, of course, an obvious one. Right. Uh, we've been in uh, defense stocks for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say five or six years. Uh, and Boeing fits into that camp, of course, but also in the commercial jet business. Now, their problems are well profiled. Uh, they have this problem with the 737 MAX. Right. And I don't want to minimize that. But there are two global commercial airline manufacturers. Right. And there is no excess uh, supply. So uh, I think it's remarkable that given what's happened, that Boeing has hung in like a champ against a really tough tape. And if something isn't going down when you think it should, given the news, mm -hmm. you're missing something. Mm -hmm. And I think the issue here is, is this a big business? 737 MAX is certainly important to them. They will get through this issue. Uh, I think for somebody who's more value-oriented, uh, this is something you can own. Now, there's, there's going to be still tough news flow. But given the fact that we've seen hearings, we've seen all kinds of lawsuits, we've seen incredible press, the fact that this hanging in around the $370 level is, is really bullish. And I think that the industrial sector as a whole and the aerospace sector as a whole is supportive. So uh, I think if you're looking out over two or three years, you're going to do really well with Boeing. Yeah, to your point, it really is a duopoly, right? Airbus being the other game in town. They did get, what, an order for 50 MAX jets. Uh, maybe the number's not very significant, but the fact that they got the order should tell you that maybe, just maybe, sentiment is starting to shift just a, just a tad. Well, just look at it. There's yeah. been virtually no cancellations, right. right? And the backlog is there. So this will get sorted out, I would think. And uh, I think that there's probably, you know, pretty significant upside over the next sort of two to three years. Stock up a half percent today. All right. Thank you, sir. Back to the phones. Natalie in Toronto. Hi, Natalie. Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call, you Mr. Bet. Ball. So nice to see you again. Uh, well, you recommended American Tower a few mm -hmm. years ago, and I purchased it, and I've done very well with it. I'd like to have your opinion if I should continue to hold. And also, I heard from another analyst, I don't know the names, another a tower company named Crystal, also out of the United States, and I wonder if you'd recommend buying it, and would it be safe to hold it for the long term? So thank you very much for taking my call. Sorry, Natalie, what was the second stock? Uh, something with the CCI, Crystal or something, also yeah. some Crown. satellite Crown. tower company All right. that another analyst mentioned, and okay. I wanted to know Mr. Bo's opinion on it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Natalie. Okay. So, Natalie, American Tower has been, you know, sort of a gift that's kept on giving. Uh, it's, uh, um, uh, you know, in the REIT space, but with more dividend growth mm -hmm. than most. 
Uh, we've got uh, 5G coming down the pipe, uh, which will be good for them because in effect all they do is they own own buildings with an unlimited number of floors. Right. You know, keep putting same more gear on the same towers. Now, tactically speaking, I think we are seeing early stages of some rotation from things that are highly predictable to mm -hmm. things that are a little more economically sensitive. So it's possible it could underperform a little bit. It's a great company. You're not going to get hurt in it. Uh, and it is going to be a great dividend grower. So it's pulled back. The, the competitor is Crown Castle International. Right, uh, CCI. Quite a similar, quite a similar company. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing. On a relative basis over the last few months, underperforming a little bit, pulling back into the moving averages. Mm -hmm. uh, but for those that are looking for dividend growth, uh, I, would, uh, I, would, I would continue to look at these. Okay. Thank you, and uh, thank you for your call, Natalie. Let's get to Louisa in Hamilton, Ontario. Hi, Louisa. Hi there. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. So I'm interested to know what to do about one of the dogs in my RRSP, and it's <laughs> Charles Schwab. Okay. Um, I sold um, J.P. Morgan at a good profit. Nice. Um, I bought Schwab thinking it would start to pick up, right. and instead it's gone the other direction. Yeah. So, uh, Louisa, do you mind me asking when you bought it? At what price? Uh, in March of 2018. Okay. What's your average cost, do you know? Uh, fifth, uh, $40, $43. Okay, so she's, she'd be breaking even if she bailed, right? So, yeah, so no, it's trading, trading 33 right now. Look, uh, here's, here's the way I look at this. Um, uh, I think, sorry, um, I think that uh, the financial services group looks very interesting. Um, we, we are big in, big in financials. Uh, they've obviously gone in the discount space, uh, gone through this repricing of commissions. Yeah. Uh, and so they are going forward really dependent on their net interest margin that mm -hmm. they make on the cash that they hold for their customers uh, and management fees on managed products that they sell. Uh, and they've done a good job in moving towards that, but in the near term, it impacts their margins, mm -hmm. right? Now, if you believe that we have a pickup in the economic cycle, then you think that the, that the yield curve becomes a little steeper, it gets right. better for th these folks. Um, I think a better market is good for them as well. So if I had to pick between J.P. Morgan and Schwab, I'd still pick J.P. Morgan. Right. Um, right. But I, I think you're going to do just fine with Schwab, actually. And uh, the whole financial services group, the fund managers like T. Rowe look really attractive. Mm -hmm. Um, CI in Canada, I think, looks quite attractive because they've gone through a period of time where people said the dynamics are difficult. But I think that that sentiment around this industry is now improving. Well, it begs the question then: What happened to TD? Because that news sort of kicked TD Ameritrade in the pants, and then that sort of uh, bled into to TD Bank, right? Which a lot of folks, your colleagues, would say is a bit of a buy right now. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I think that that whole space is obviously has some structural challenges. Right. There's no question. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would like financials as a whole. So if I had to pick a broker. Mm -hmm. I'd probably pick Morgan Stanley, right? Right, because they've got a bigger high net worth wealth management business yeah. and so on. I think Raymond James looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the asset managers, T. Rowe, looks quite good. Um, but I, I think at this point on your Schwab, I would st stay put uh, because I think likely over the next 18 months you're going to do quite well. All right, David, thank you for the call. Everyone, thank you for calling in. We'll come back to uh, more of your phone calls next. You're watching Market Call on BNM Bloomberg. Our number, one 326 6266